Hi, I'm Cindy Hartline, host of Love for the Truth Radio. You know, so many have been messaging me and asking, what's going on with our ministry? Well, we are in transition. The pandemic has brought a lot of changes with it. Have you noticed that there is a lot of transitioning going on among God's people? You know, some are selling their homes and moving. I know two cases where they sold their homes but don't know where they are going. They are trusting in the Lord's leading. Some are changing jobs. Others decide to stay at home and homeschool. And even some are changing careers. God is moving things around. And I believe bringing those who are truly His to come closer, while others, sadly, are falling more prey to this world, getting further away from having an intimate relationship with Him. If you are experiencing a lot of trial or warfare now, just know that God is going to turn it around for good. Read His Word daily, stay in His presence, and listen to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Well, our ministry is transitioning as well. As many of you know, for six years I've been interviewing many veterans of the faith, humble brothers and sisters whom I've had the honor to meet. People like Amir Sarfati, Jan Markell, Johanna Michelson, David Fiorazzo, John Haller, Mike Gendron, Carl Tycrib, just to name a few, and many, many more strong teachers who are continuously on the front lines, bringing us the real good news. And we need to pray for those who endeavor to bring us the gospel truth. On Love for the Truth Radio, our shows focus much on the false teachings that were and are still being taught by renowned ministers, pastors, and teachers. Some Gospels being infiltrated with postmodernism, five-point Calvinism, preterism, legalism, and many of the man-made Gospel-isms, which lead many to deny Christ and fall into apostasy, a falling away from the faith. Some even say there is no such thing as a believer falling away from the faith, that those who know the Lord can fall away. Well, the book of Jude is an exhortation to believers that they must continue to earnestly contend for the faith, the common salvation that was once delivered to the saints, because certain ungodly men crept in and turned the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lasciviousness is s l g i. It means unbridled lust, excess licentiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamefulness, and insolence, basically works of the flesh that is void of the spirit, desecrating our very souls that should be reserved for Christ. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, we read, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such of which I told you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. One can profess Christ and think they are okay in His grace, but allow me to quote this again. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are some professing Christians who are not being led of the Spirit, who are evidently being led of the flesh, a very dangerous place to be. Note that fornication is on that list. Many so-called professing Christians are committing fornication, having sexual relations without being married, even supporting the LGBTQ agenda, which focuses on such relationships. Well, this is a warning to you who think you are, quote, saved and are involved in such abominations. You may have listened to a false gospel teaching of grace without judgment and need to repent. Jesus Christ can indeed save you from such sin, 
but you can't have a covenant relationship with him as his bride while involved with such sin. The book of Jude reminds us how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, even after they said they would obey and abide in him, while saying, this we will do in covenant with him. After a while, they didn't believe in him enough to be saved from harmful acts. The word saved is sozo. It means to be saved from harm. The book of Jude goes on to say, and even the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them who gave themselves over to fornication and went after strange flesh, suffered the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, law, and order, and speak evil of dignities. Well, we are witnessing depraved behaviors today in in the name of politics. New laws stating that adults can have sex with 10-year-olds? And we know that judgment is coming. At the same time, the Lord is separating those who truly are His, who love Him with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength, who love him more than their own fleshly lusts and even themselves. Simply those who are willing to be bridled by his loving and gracious spiritual disciplines to be groomed by him, to be one in spirit with him. Again, it's those who are willing to be bridled by his loving and gracious disciplines and to be groomed by him will become one in spirit with him or save from harm. You know, in the last 10 years, I've dedicated much of my time to the study of who the bride of Christ really is. And I have to reluctantly admit that the gospels being taught today are so far from whom Jesus Christ desires his bride to be. Only by the spirit can his bride be sanctified, consecrated, set apart from the filth of this world. And all through the Bible, we see that the Lord desires to have an intimate covenant relationship with his people. God divorced Israel because of her fornications. In many cases, she was still using the sacrificial worship system, but following other gods. Today, some go to church faithfully, saying they know the Lord, but think abortion or having sexual relationships outside of marriage is okay. It's not okay. They are serving another God. Judah and Israel sacrificed their children on the altar of Baal. Do not be deceived. Our culture is doing the same, sacrificing our children to abortion on the altar of self-worship, including pedophilia and the wickedness of trafficking. In Jeremiah 11, we read that the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, Judah as a nation said they would abide by the law with the gracious help of the sacrificial system, but they failed and broke their covenant with God. If a believer says he or she believes in the Lord and do not abide by the new covenant, all that is written in the New Testament, the Gospels and the Epistles, with the help and leading of the Holy Spirit, and with the ability to repent, then that believer has broken covenant with our Lord. Yes, God always provides grace to repent and to ask for forgiveness and to get it right with Him. There are, however, pastors who say you can live in sin, and if you say the prayer, you automatically become the righteousness of Christ. This is a false doctrine. Love for the Truth Radio is transitioning to more of a teaching program with a focus on getting ready as the Bride of Christ. So please pray for our ministry. 
The spiritual warfare has been intense, but God is strengthening us through it all. For what Satan has meant for evil, God has meant for good. So we will be up and running very soon. In the meantime, focus on loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, trusting that He is transitioning you into a good place. Till next time, big hugs.